Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Gerbil, and in tonight's video, to Falcon or not to Falcon? Hmm. We're going to try to look at it uh, from a bit more macro perspective and decide whether or not the Falcon needs to stay with the Profundity or go back to home one. I think I know the answer, but it is kind of conditional, so let's get started, shall we? All right, so first off, the conventional wisdom is obviously to put the Millennium Falcon with the Profundity because with just the Falcon, the Y-Wing, and the Outrider, you can beat any fleet in the game with max banners. Now in GAC, if you have no reinforcements, you're gonna get a bonus four points for a total of 77 banners. That is the best you can do, I think, unless my math's wrong, no matter what, it's amazing. But, Akbar, he's all like, fish took my bird and he's right because the raven while it's another bird it's not as good it's nowhere near as good and the home one fleet is just well it's lacking something it's it's absolutely lacking so i i've been playing and testing and promoting the falcon with the profundity and i think it should stay there if you are really concerned about needing a full clear or maximizing your banners but if you are more concerned about defeating two fleets rather than just uh, getting those max banners, putting the Falcon back with home one and putting Ghost in its place as a starting lineup with, yes, Raven's Claw and the uh, Phantom as a backup still leaves you a squad that's not going to lose. Profundity's not going to lose. I mean, unless you just royally mess things up, you should not be losing with this. Um, but then you get your you get your home one back which can beat any other non-profundity fleet though it will of course struggle against executors so this lineup gives you two awesome solid offensive teams compared to just one amazing team superstar and then a meh so let me let me show you how this works i'll give you some gameplay i'm going to show you four videos here so before we get to that here's my fleet so you know where i stand okay my ray my claw my raven's claw is uh six stars but all in these videos it was only five in the videos i'm going to show you and uh relic six what's notable is i have no r8 pilots hera is relic five zeb and kanan are both only gear eight gear eight so if i can do this with a gear eight pilot Imagine what we could do with relic pilots and actually shout out to my buddy on discord Who's been helping me talk this out two of them? Um, I don't know if they want me sharing their names or not But two of my discord buddies have been helping me practice this and sharing some video and one of them has relic seven Phoenix across the board and It works beautifully like I un, with that level of relics you absolutely do not need the Falcon with the profundity so here let's look at some gameplay all right so here's the strategy you open up essentially with the fleet has arrived from the profundity this is going to mark xanadu once he's marked the outrider goes pew 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 five times with the concussion middles it drops his uh his defense and uh puts himself into stealth i think i don't know if that's what did it or not but whatever so the ai is likely going to target the y-wing if you have higher gear ghost crew they will go before the y wing but again mine is gear eight so they went second so the y wing did a basic it would basic probably anyway but what you have to do is not think of the ghost as an attacker no 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 you need to think of the ghost as a support healer yes you heard me right because you see the y wing every time an ally scores a critical hit the Y-Wing regenerates everybody's protection, I think 20%. So when the Ghost does its uh, Static Jammer, I think that's the ability that calls a targeted assist plus two random rebel assists, they're not gonna do a whole lot of damage, but you are gonna get four attacks. And if those four attacks include the, the Outrider, you actually will land seven attacks. That is a lot of crits that you will get. That means you, the ghost will restore everybody's protection back near 100%. Likewise, it's AOE that we just saw. The more enemies are out there, the more the effect of the AOE will be because it will be multiple instances of critical hits, which recovers protection. So you open again with that fleet has arrived, target Xanadu, concussion missiles, and then ghost heal. Because between ghost uh, and the outrider, 
the enemy executive fleet is going to take all of its turns. So they're going to go pew 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 a bunch and they're going to damage you. In some unfortunate situations, they will kill the Y-Wing and then it's really hard to recover. But that is the exception. That is an absolute exception. It rarely happens. So after, no matter what, even if they kill Y-Wing, you've dropped Xanadu and you're going to mess up the fleet. And if you had to, you could go in and clean up with Home 1. No problem. Anyway, that's like a very rare exception. I've done this already about 20 times. I've seen it happen once, maybe twice. I can't recall. But also it's worth noting, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is a Relic 9 Piet I'm playing against, a Relic 9 Bosk, a Relic 8 Mando, Cad Bane, Boba Fett, IG. The lowest Relic on this enemy team is eight. My lowest gear is two pilots at gear eight, right? From Relic 8 to gear eight. Look at the state of the board right now. Max health and protection on the entire fleet, okay? I didn't finish this one because it wasn't my time to advance yet in the fleet. So, our fleet chart, here we go. Let's look at another one real quick. So this one is also against a super, super maxed out fleet. All right, fleet has arrived. Xanadu's out of stealth. We're going to go concussion missiles on him. All right, we got an assist, which is fine, but no, no big deal. All right, they're pounding away on the Y-Wing, which is typical. Uh, I've noticed that Raven, the Razor Crest, almost always attacks Ghost. So again, if you have more gear, you'll have 30 to 40,000 more life than mine. You'll be fine. We do the Ghost Static Jammer, bump up everybody's protection. We're back up to full health and protection almost. Xanadu is dead. Now, after this, what you need to do is just heal. Heal, 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 heal. It's all about the healing and the assists. Literally, your only objective is to heal and crank up that download for the profundity. Once you get the download, you win pretty much. It's almost a, a almost a 100% you win. So how do you get there? Of course you get there with the assists. Every assist is one download. So that's again why the, the ghost is pretty good at this. And uh, of course you get there with the healing. Emergency repairs right there gives profundity 20% download. So you may be tempted to call in a reinforcement. Notice I'm not calling in a reinforcement. Why? Because the reinforcement, if it dies or takes damage at the end, we lose points, right? You lose banners. I don't want to do that. So I'm not calling in reinforcement. Instead, I'm using Profundity's basic. This is the most overlooked thing. Oh, snaparoo. See, that's where you need higher gear than gear eight. The Profundity's basic gives itself 10% download. That in itself is fantastic, but it also gives the target ally a bonus turn. That needs to go to the Outrider almost every single time. Because if the Outrider takes a turn and then Profundity takes a turn, you're basically giving it back-to-back -back turns to drop its cooldowns to do the emergency repairs over and over and over again, right? It's all about, like I said, those healing and the downloads. So unless you absolutely need that reinforcement, and I don't think you will, then use the basic. Attack somebody, call in or uh, pass the turn off to the Outrider, and do whatever it needs to do. And keep in mind, it's basic is gonna crit almost always three times, which is 60% protection recovery on your whole fleet because of the Y ring, right? So here we go, let's move on. We can see here, we've got this, we did lose Ghost, but we have full banners on everything else here. So we lose three banners total, but if there was no reinforcement, we still end up with 74 banners. 74 banners, that, that's better than a perfect win with full reinforcements. Right. So absolutely amazing with gear eight pilots. So here's here's what I've been uh, here's what I documented. I've actually done this a lot more in various iterations. And with the, the squads you see here, I have 12 wins and four losses. That's with my gear eight ghost. That's the caveat. The squad where I take Ghost out and I put Raven's Claw in, and yes, Raven's Claw, as a starter, I've had eight wins and two losses, again, against nearly maxed out executors. So why the Raven's Claw? This is not something that I actually recommend. Uh, minus five star in testing, at seven stars it may be a lot better, I don't know. But what happens is, as I've been stressing, the objective is to survive. It is to 
heal up, survive, and then get to the Profundity's ultimate. And interestingly, this ship helps you quite a bit. If you think of it not as an attacker or whatever, but as a support unit, it might be support, I'm not sure. It's pretty tanky. So if you call it as a reinforcement, it gets plus 40% health for each non-scoundrel. So that's gonna include Profundity, the Ghost, the Y-Ring, that's 120% bonus health. That means it can take a hit. It's going to get Foresight quite often and it will pass Foresight to the Y-Wing a lot. Every time a non-scoundrel ally assists a non-scoundrel ally, this one, that ship gains Foresight, which means the Y-Wing, which is constantly assisting, will get Foresight to survive a lot longer. So the tank survives because of this ship a lot better. Now, um, the, the Claw does not have a high crit chance, but it does have an AOE, of course, which is multiple opportunities for it. It does attack twice if it's attacking with a target that has a target lock, and it can call assist. Those are all very conditional. If it also has foresight, I think, or if the target's target locked, it will cleanse on basics similar to the Falcon. So it has some good things. It is way better with Home One, but honestly, if the Falcon is with Home One, you don't need the claw. You just don't. So I've been experimenting with it. I like it. I think the ghost is better. So here's your speeds. No big deal. The turn order, if you want to screenshot it, it's pretty much what I talked about. Fleet is arrived, concussion missile, static jammer, basic. Xanadu should be dead already. Almost certainly should be dead. Now you just pump that download. Heal, download, heal, download. Assist, target outrider, heal, download. Basic target outrider from the profundity, heal, download. That's it until you get there. All right, so two more videos. I'll, I'll talk a little bit through this one, but then I'm going to let the next one just kind of play out without me. But this one we're starting with the outrider, sorry, outrider, Y Wing, and the Raven's Claw. And we can kind of see the difference here. Um, because my Phoenix crew is gear eight, I had better net outcomes with this lineup. But again, I think at gear 12, uh, Phoenix, it's a whole different game. And like I said, my Discord buddy who has, uh, the two of them who have high relics, woo, no problem. Just absolutely no problem. It's a heck of an investment, but it's two viable, solid offensive fleets rather than one epic and one meh, right? So you can see pretty much exactly the same opening, right? Fleet has arrived, concussion missiles, basic, basic, pew, pew, pew. All right, we are calling in Ghost here. We're going to do the, uh, probably the AOE, but I think I do the mass assist. Yep, there we go. So we're just pumping that download with the with the with uh, all those assists. And here we go. We're going to double tap because he's got target lock. Oh, no. What did I do that for? Oh, still. Oh, maybe it's the foresight. I don't remember the kit. I really don't remember. Here we go. Basic. We're going to give Outrider a turn. Even though he had high turn meter, I don't care. It just speeds him up. It just lowers those cooldowns. All right. We got three enemies happening here. All right. Put some defense down on the bad guys. Ghost is in danger. Again, you need, need more gear than I got. But here we go. Heal up. There we go. And perfect. Bye bye, Executor. All right. We got our damage immunity on everybody. And at this point, we just clean house. All right, one more video. Maybe I'll talk, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. All right, so here's the last one. Uh, same same lineup. Fleet has arrived. Xanadu, missiles, five away. Perfect. We got an assist, which dazes him twice, three times. Okay, that was, that was purely luck. But that was really great, huh? All right, so you can see here how um, the, uh, the Raven's Claw goes into stealth, actually, which is one of the benefits from the fleet has arrived. It puts your support ships into stealth, so that guarantees that they can only attack the Y-Wing, which is an interesting note because Y-Wing is a crewless ship, which means Executor allows its team to avoid it. Here we go. Watch. Here, here's the heal maneuver. Watch this. Ooh, look at that. Full protection. And then Outrider. We're going to heal up right here and get some 20% download action. And so... See that? This is great. We did not kill Xanadu, but he's close enough to minimum health that as soon as Ghost gets a turn, 
We do the AOE attack and we'll take him down probably. All right, we're losing some protection. There's most of it back, AOE. Y wing is back at almost full. There we go, probably full. And now we're gonna do the uh, unconventional maneuvers on the outrider so we get a double assist. Or we could pass turn with the basic. I think I'll pass turn, no I don't, okay, whatever. Probably should have done a basic on Outrider, because see it has low uh, turn meter. That would have just pumped it right back up. All right, nice. And what what I haven't really mentioned is that we are getting quite a few uh, foresights out there on the team because of the Raven's Claw. All right, here we go. Heal up again. Like I said, it's all about healing. It's just all about healing. I mean, this looks kind of scary. It does. But it all, it works out way more often than one would expect. Okay, as long as he doesn't go after Ghost, and it usually doesn't, we're good. Here we go. Basic. All right, here we go. The missiles. That's a triple five shots. Everybody's back up protection. Outrider's going to, no, Profundity's going to take a turn. We're going to get rid of the capital ship. That puts everybody on my lineup into damage immunity. It's kind of the same thing, actually, isn't it? As like Executor, where Executor stuns everyone here, they go into damage immunity. Basically, it's it's very similar. You're negating a turn either way, except by not being under stun, you do get to lower the cooldowns. So of course, the AI is not very bright, and we'll use its special moves. All right, so we're back up to full health, full protection. Oh, look at that! I called in Phantom. I mean, why not, right? It's going to be in stealth. Oh, that's why, because AOE. Silly me. All right, Suprosa computer, everybody's going <laughs> to get a 100% crit chance, which means that Raven's Claws AOE just, oh, boom, we lost someone. Five stars, though, buddy, five stars. Anyway, folks, I hope this gives you something to think about, something to ponder. I got super excited about this as I was testing it, and then the last few days really worn me down, and I'm tired. But... Um, it's definitely something to consider because I think you know, this is the way forward for me, at least for the foreseeable future. I'm putting Home 1 or Falcon back with Home 1 um, because I'm doing good enough here. And after I get Jabba, I'm going to gear up Zeb and Kanan. All right, folks. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you all on the holotables. Bye-bye.